In today's topic, we will walk through some facts you probably didn't know about Krita. So without further ado, let's jump to it. So, before we continue, let me tell you about Skillshare, which is a platform that has hundreds of classes about animation, drawing, illustration, and several other creative fields. Join us today for a course led by the 2D animator Munka. It is about animation using Krita, a fantastic alternative to pricey software like Photoshop. This course is all about mastering Krita's drawing tools with a strong emphasis on frame-by-frame -frame animations and the exciting new tweening animation feature. Get ready to explore Krita's basics character design and the art of creating vibrant eye-catching animations including cool robo character animations the first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of skillshare premium membership all right now back to the video starting with number one the origin of krita the story starts in 1998 at the Linux Congress when Matthias Etrick, founder of KDE, chose GIMP as a demo to show the possibility to hack a Qt GUI around an existing app. Unfortunately, his patch was never published and they weren't in a position to work together. So the KDE community decided to start their own image manipulation software like Photoshop and GIMP, named back then K-Image Shop, and they officially released it in 2004. You are probably wondering why they changed the name to Krita. Well, here's number two, the story behind the name and the mascot. Going back to 2002, the project underwent numerous name changes. They couldn't register the name K-Image Shop because of the trademark law in Germany. So they decided to rename it to Crayon instead, which also appeared to be refused. With some brainstorming, they ended up renaming the project to Krita and was inspired by two Swedish words, krita meaning crayon, and rita which means to draw. They added the K prefix to match all the apps developed by the KDE community. Maintained by a community of volunteers. Krita is a community project with a dozen of generous contributors, and most of the development was done by a group of volunteers in their free time pitching in to make it better. This project simply wouldn't have been possible without them. In 2012, the Krita community created the Krita Foundation, which is an independent nonprofit org to provide more support and further the development. In addition to that, they released a paid Steam version that costs $15, in which all the money will be directly supporting Krita's development. Uh, moving forward and speaking about the Steam version, all the way to 2018, Krita used to have two variants. You probably heard before about Krita Gemini. If not, back in 2013, Krita used to have two versions, Krita Studio and Krita Gemini. The main difference between the two is that Krita Studio was free and it was designed for desktop slash notebook users with a full featured desktop user interface while Krita Gemini was a paid version optimized for tablets with a touch-friendly alternate UI. Even though Krita Gemini succeeded, the KDE team decided to cancel it and replace it with the regular desktop Krita due to some problems relating to the programming process. And moving on, one of the key reasons why many people are choosing Krita over other art software is having plenty of advanced tools and features, starting with the powerful brush engine. One of the main aspects of perfection in artwork or a painting is using the best brushes. In this context, Krita has more than 100 brushes and over 10 built-in powerful brush engines that can be used for sketching and painting such as the color smudge engine, shape engine, particle engine, filler engine, and many, many more. Moreover, Krita also allows you to customize your brushes based on the various effects, patterns, and designs you want, and you can save them and organize them with Krita's unique tagging system. Now that you have an idea of how powerful the Krita brushes are, let's jump to another fact, which is that Krita was the first worldwide HDR painting app. In 2019, when Krita launched the patch 4.2.0, they introduced HDR painting, making it the first painting application that supports it. And if you don't know what HDR is, it stands for High Dynamic Range. And in general, it gives you a wide range of colors that are very close to real world colors, including more greens and reds, as well as 10 to 16 bits per channel, which allows much smoother gradients and much more flexibility. And while we're on the topic of colors, 
colors, one of the techniques used to edit and adjust colors is using filters. And without a doubt, uh, Krita has a large set of advanced filters. One of the biggest advantages that filters offer is that they allow you to make your sketches look more professional, with very little effort. <laughs> yes, filters can ruin your work if you overuse them, but when you use them wisely, they can be very useful. Krita features a wide variety of filters between the built-in ones and the extra ones provided by the gimmick library, which will help you adjust the tone and the color of your artwork. They range from simple filters like blur, color, and edge detection to more advanced ones like chalk filters. Furthermore, the wide range of colors available makes it possible to customize your art even further. Aside from using filters to make your sketch and drawing even better, they can be used in photo editing, which is one of the reasons why Krita isn't just for painting. The KDE team doesn't dispute the fact that Krita can be a photo editor, even though it was fully converted into a digital painting app in 2009. But it still has advanced photo editing features pretty similar to Photoshop that can facilitate your tasks effectively like adjustment layers, CMYK and RGB color modes to pick a suitable color module, multi-layer selection that can be applied in editing to avoid file replacement, and the ability to open and handle raw images. So if you are looking for a free image editing software, Krita might help you. Besides all the digital painting and photo editing features, Krita is also known for being good for animation. Krita has all the essential pieces you need to create perfect frame-by-frame -frame animation like layering tools, brush tools, shaping tools, and advanced workflow management features, including including the Timeline Docker, the Storyboard Docker, the Onion Skin Docker, which helps you keep watch of all the frames simultaneously, and lastly, the Animation Curves Docker that allows artists to animate the value of some properties over time. In general, this app covers every feature and specification a good animation software would have. So next up, we have good news for people who enjoy programming. You can code on Krita with Python scripting. Yes, you can add a bit of programming to your workflow. Python scripting in Krita provides access to a number of functions and objects, which can be used to create custom scripts and plugins and automate repetitive tasks. In addition to coding, inside the software, you can even code the software itself. As in, you can manually fix bugs. Krita is an open source software and its source code is available for anybody to view, modify, and contribute to. So you can download the source, set up your development environment, and then manually change lines of code and add functions or fix any bugs. This is absolutely legal and does not infringe on copyright. With all these features and functionalities, Krita is slowly becoming a tough competitor for Photoshop. Year after year, Krita keeps upgrading and improving, becoming one of the best alternatives to Photoshop, especially when it comes to 2D animation and digital painting. We can see that Krita is getting better than Photoshop as the learning curve is less steep and the price point is uh, free, which can be a significant advantage over Photoshop's subscription model. And with its increasing popularity, a lot of artists and studios and even some art schools are switching to it, such as the ATI, Art and Technology of Image Department at the University of Paris, where they decided that in 2015 to use Krita after years of using Photoshop. And that is it for today. If you find these facts interesting, why not give Krita a try and start creating beautiful artworks? Thank you for watching. I hope this video was fun and informative enough. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye!